Do you know how to adjust your privacy settings on the various different social media platforms that exist? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you exactly how. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look at supporting you with technology enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to change your privacy settings on various different social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn purely and simply because the amount of information you share can be clearly relevant, particularly when you work as a doctor or another clinician and how much information you may want to share. To be honest, you really need to know what you're sharing. So for that reason, this is going to be an instructional video that shows you how to do that on all of these platforms. As always, subscribe to our content, make sure you ring the bell to be first and foremost notified of it on any of the platforms that you're listening or watching on, and as a result of that, you'll get everything straight away. Anyway guys, let's get straight to the video. Shall we begin? Hey GP learners, in this episode we're going to take a look at how to change your privacy settings on three of the most commonly used social media platforms in the UK. That's Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn, specifically because these are the three most commonly used ones used by clinicians. Starting off with Facebook, I'm going to have a look at how to change those in particular. It's important to recognize that I will be using the desktop website simply because of the fact that the apps can be different depending on which system you use and also you actually get more functionality when you use the desktop website in terms of what you can see and how quickly you can change them. The interesting thing about Facebook is it does actually look at privacy in a slightly different way, particularly since the issues with Cambridge Analytical and the fallout from that. So the first thing that you can do when you go to Facebook is go to their privacy checkup. So if you're on the desktop website, if you go to the top right hand part, there's a question mark in the top right hand corner. Click on that and click on privacy checkup when it comes from the drop down menu. This is a quick and simple checkup as it kind of sounds. And effectively what it lets you do is clarify what depth of amount of sharing you want from all the different information that Facebook has on you. So first it looks at your posts. So who is the audience of your posts? And I can select this to either be public, which is what mine's currently set to, or you can make this less public by limiting it to your friends or to other groups or to yourself. And you can specify how you want to do that as you guys have been watching me do on the video. The next section is your actual profile content. Now I'm not going to show you this because this will show you all my personal details. But effectively, this is things like your phone number, your email address, your address, where you've been to school, all that kind of stuff. And it will let you limit how much of that information you wish to share. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to go to this slide, which actually shows you the next part, which is the apps and website that Facebook interacts with when it's using your data. So at the moment, you can see that I've used Facebook to log into things like Spotify and um, to use it for other kind of apps and stuff. If I click on the drop down menu it has, I've set all of these only for me to see. But you can select whether it's friends can see this information, other groups that you may have. So I've got one called friends except acquaintances. I must admit, I think I made that ages ago and I'm not quite sure the difference between that and my friends, but hey. Um, or you can select other options, for example, different groups that you may be part of. So family members, limited profile, organizations you've been working with, which may be linked in with other people and stuff. So you can specify how much and who you're sharing your information with, how you choose to. When you finish that, it then takes you through to a privacy checkup being complete. And you can then go into more in detail in terms of privacy or to the actual settings. The interesting thing about clicking on the more privacy button is that it does take you to the other privacy tool that Facebook give you, which is the privacy shortcuts. So this is like a tutorial thing that explains in depth how all the various different privacy settings work and stuff. So it lets you uh, show you how to review your privacy settings, tells you more about how it uses your data and, and various other things. This can be worthwhile going through in a little bit more detail um, if you're interested in looking at how much information Facebook actually has on you. Um, but it's also quite simplistic as well. If you are more keen to have a good idea of what Facebook has, I'd recommend going to the settings tab so on the desktop site, that's the little arrow at the top. You click on that and you go down towards where it says settings. And when you do that, you met with a screen that looks like this one. 
So as you can see, we're now in the settings section of my Facebook page. And this has very similar information as to what is held in the privacy checkup, but it goes into significant more detail. So for example, you can specify um, who can send you friend requests, you can specify who can see your friend list, who can look you up using your email address or your phone number, and do you want to appear in search engines outside of Facebook? I guess one of my key tips is that anybody using Facebook potentially may want to click that to no, because then that limits how other people can find you, and particularly if you're concerned about the amount of information you may be sharing, that's a quick way of limiting some of that information, at least to the Facebook medium itself rather than Facebook+. Plus. There are various other things that you can adjust and ad adapt um, and to be honest going through every single one of those settings would take considerable amount of time to show you in this video in total if you wanted to do a proper privacy audit kind of thing for your profile you're looking at about 20 minutes or so to go through everything in detail so i would highly recommend doing this at least every six months or so just to make sure it's still how you want it to be um, but quick and easy to do and actually Facebook has made it a lot easier particularly with the privacy checkup. If we then go to the next social media platform that is commonly used by doctors and that would be Twitter. So to access the Twitter version of a privacy checkup go to your profile and then click on the more section and then that will take you through to the settings and privacy tab. So you click on that and it'll take you through. I'm going to show you through this other medium purely simply because then again it doesn't show you some of my more personal information straight away and the privacy tab in your settings is not as big as the one on Facebook but it does have a lot of information there so the first thing that you can select when you go into the settings section is to basically create all your tweets to be protected what that effectively means is that no one can follow you on Twitter unless you give them authorization to do so so when they request to follow you you then have to click okay they can follow you that can be very good if you're concerned about privacy and stuff and making sure that your information isn't shared but if i'm being honest that pretty much goes against the whole point of twitter and therefore means that you're not going to be able to have any or significant amount of impact in terms of broadcasting and stuff i would recommend you do that if you're using twitter purely and simply as a method to keeping an eye on what's going out in the world but don't really want to engage in the platform in a significant way you can select or whether or not you share your location. This, I guess, is a positive and a negative. Um, Twitter can be really good at sharing information and particularly for things like disaster management, but also personalization. Um, and that can work a lot more effectively, let them know your location. Alternately, you may not be interested in doing that and therefore clearly can switch that off. You can select how people can tag you in photos and as well discoverability, either via your email or phone number because Twitter will probably have those details because they use them for verification. Um, or you can adjust some of the other kind of content that they have. I guess the key thing that I would suggest having a look at in a little bit more detail is the personalization and data section. Purely because it's a little bit minimalistic on the profile. But once you have a look at it, that shows how Twitter uses your data in terms of personalizing it for your feeds and that kind of thing. So if I click on that just to show you guys, this effectively means that I can see how much data Twitter has on me, how they personalize the ads that they show to me, um, what information they share with their business partners, as well as how they display things and stuff. So that's a little bit more detail and things. If I go back, then I can also see all the various different safety aspects so in terms of content that I may be shown by Twitter. Um, so protected content, um, content they deem to be potentially and sensitive and stuff as well as things like blocked and muted accounts and that kind of stuff as I said the privacy section on Twitter is much smaller than that on Facebook that's not necessarily a bad thing um, it does suggest that they don't require as much data potentially but they do get a lot of data on you and it's worth having a look at what they have finally I'm just gonna have a look at LinkedIn so LinkedIn is a more professional perspective social media platform um, probably less used by clinicians um, but increasingly being used by clinicians as well as in terms of the business side of general practice when you go to your profile the way to access your settings is to go to the top right hand corner and there's a section that says me and when you click on that it'll give you the option of going to your settings and privacy when you do so it opens up another tab that effectively lets you go through your settings for your privacy 
section in quite significant detail. Probably a happy medium between the Facebook and the Twitter version, if I'm being honest. Have a look at how people view your public profile. Um, this I'd really recommend having a look at. So I'm going to show you doing this on, on my screen. Effectively, this is what my personal profile would look like to somebody who came across my page. Um, and it lets me select how much information I share. So, for example, my name, the number of connections I have and the region I'm from, as well as other information like my headline, um, the summary, the activities that I do. So what I do on LinkedIn and stuff. But as many of you can see, I haven't opted to share things like my current experience, my past experience and my education and that kind of stuff. because I haven't really felt that's relevant for what I want to use LinkedIn for. You can adjust that as you want. It's quick and easy to do with little sliders and stuff. So fairly simple to do. And there's lots of other information that you can then select how you want to share. So things like your personal information, like email addresses, connections to the people that you're talking with and things. Uh, viewers, uh, you know, other views. So if you want to make more connections and stuff, as well as organizations, um, my visibility off LinkedIn with other partners that they may have, as well as Word, because LinkedIn is actually owned by Microsoft, as well as viewing options, statuses, job changes and stuff, and connections when I've been in the news or tagged and stuff. Similar to the other social media platforms, there is a section looking at how LinkedIn uses your data. Again, this is worth considering having a brief look at, as well as contacts and even things like salary if you put that information on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is, like I said, more business focused. There is some stuff about job seeking preferences. Um, I think it is actually worth having a look at this because I've actually found a little bit of work through LinkedIn with some of the work that I, I tend to do. And if you do use it effectively, it can be quite useful to know how much information you are sharing with people before they even come to you or vice versa and then finally things like blocks and hiding and that kind of stuff so seeing how that whole section works so as you can see this was what i was looking at before i've not blocked anyone so not really relevant in my situation but if this has happened to you um, this can be definitely worth looking at so i hope you guys have found that useful um i do you think it's worthwhile that you, as I said earlier, that you have a look at your privacy settings on a regular basis, particularly considering so most of the social media platforms have a habit of changing how they structure things? Um, technically, they shouldn't be able to change your settings without your knowledge, but they can sometimes adjust the way that they define their sharing settings. And as a result of that, every six months to a year or so, you should be checking, go through your privacy settings so that you know that you are sharing exactly the information you want to. So EGP learners, I hope you found that useful. Slightly more instructional episode and it shows you exactly how to do everything. But this is what you guys have been asking me for. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, make sure you contact me. Available on all of these various different platforms we've actually talked about today. And as always, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And remember guys, here at EGP Learning, we're here to help save you and your patients time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.